uh, work with uh, uh, let me see, web scale platforms uh, and solutions and they, uh, hey, your, production, your product works well, but if you like uh, uh, to, uh, to do like uh, go beyond this, uh, then uh, you need like workarounds or uh, you need additional functionalities. And then there are like uh, smaller, uh, smaller uh, features uh, where uh, guys are coming up and saying, hey, uh, can we just improve a few options, uh, like to allow this and this, and they say, yay, uh, cool, uh, you can even contribute yourself <laughs> if you want. And now we have like over 100 contributors. They just contribute because they had an idea with how to improve uh, or uh, yeah, they, they fix something. Welcome to another edition of Cloud Unfiltered. I am your host, Michael Chenitz, and today I have my guest, Andre. Andre, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi. Yeah. Um, I'm Andre. Um, I'm CEO at Quadrant. Uh, we've been doing the building a scalable and performant vector search technology. Uh, and uh, yeah, our flagship uh, product is a, a vector database called Quadrant. So explain a little bit to the to maybe people who don't understand what a vector database is and, and why it's a little bit important in this thing called AI these days. Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, um, you definitely know like uh, uh, databases you know, for storing some data. Yeah, and we don't doing also like, we storing some data, but uh, some yeah different kind of data, not like raw data, just strings or numbers and so on, but data uh, encoded uh, by a, a neural network encoder uh, and uh, turned into vectors, uh, basically. And those vectors, uh, they represent like, uh, uh, any kind of data. It could be text, it could be image, uh, audio, video files, anything. Everything can actually be uh, turned into vectors uh, and placed in n-dimensional space. And uh, yeah, so vector database, we store this data. Uh, uh, and they store also along uh, like some metadata, uh, and then you can then uh, run queries and get some insights about your uh, unstructured data. This is how it works uh, under the hood. Uh, and yeah, you can apply it for different use cases, from starting from uh, yeah, uh, simple semantic search, uh, where you're not looking just for keywords, but uh, uh, you're looking for meaning of your query, right? You can describe like a, in the long, uh, a long query what you're looking for uh, and then the yeah uh, <clears throat> the best uh, results will be delivered uh, this is not really achievable uh, with uh, traditional keyword uh, keyword search uh, uh, but you can do it uh, easily with uh, vector search vector similarity search uh, and there are some other use cases uh, um, <clears throat> uh, like uh, for example uh, um, uh, you can uh, do image search like uh, yeah you know all these apps where you can make a photo uh, of a plant or bird, and then it will be recognized what kind of a species it is. And then, uh, yeah, this is what you also can do with, uh, with vector search uh, for um, um, image recognition, uh, like uh, face recognition or voice recognition, and uh, yeah, many other uh, interesting things. In terms of a traditional database versus a vector, for those who aren't really math uh, people here, what what uh what is what is the different like what is a vector and what is you know what what makes it different than than the way that some other things would work yeah yeah so a vector is essentially a, a, a array of uh, uh, numbers uh in our case array of uh, plots uh and it could be like a really long uh, array of uh, yeah uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, of numbers uh, and what you need to do to achieve like performance, uh, uh, okay, under the hood, what you do, like you compare all these vectors to each other, uh, just to understand uh, <clears throat> what is the relation uh, of these objects to each other, right? Uh, how uh, one object is similar to another one, and then uh, you uh, derive some in insights uh, um, based on this. Uh, and you need to do it like on, uh, you can do it like in uh, with your, uh, yeah, um, Python code, for example, for a couple of, uh, uh, arrays, uh, just uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> basic manner. But we are talking about uh, large numbers of uh, of, uh, uh, of those arrays. We're talking about hundred thousands, millions, hundred of millions, or billions of uh, these arrays. And you um, expect like uh, nowadays results within like uh, uh, milliseconds. And this is what makes it like complex. And uh, uh, in order to achieve it, uh, there are 
uh, algorithms or special specialized indexes. Um, and we are using one of these indexes uh, we extended it. Uh, and uh, this is like the core uh, of the solution. There is a specialized index uh, uh, and everything uh, built uh, around it. Uh, so you can store additional data to be able, for example, to filter the something like, hey, give me the best examples of uh, products, for example, uh, uh, but uh, only in the range of pricing range from X to, uh, X to uh, Y and so on. <clears throat> so vector databases aren't new. I mean, they've been around since the 2000s, you know, but now they've really found their um, kind of their niche with with uh, LLMs and AI and, and all these other things. So so what makes um, and I think you've already answered some of it, but what really makes it designed for AI ML and what, what did you what what's different about maybe your solution? Than, yeah than some of the other ones that are out there. Sure, sure. I wouldn't say that they are kind of, uh, um, uh, the, the, kind of the real data, dedicated uh, databases existing for uh, maybe like a few years. Uh, what we had before uh, were like libraries by pure companies and they're using this technology already for, uh, yeah, uh, since the uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah, beginning of the uh, <clears throat> year 100. Uh, but uh, uh, so the uh, really scalable solutions are uh, existing uh, yeah, literally for a few years uh, before we had these libraries and they were uh, yeah, uh, hard coupled to your application code. So it means uh, they do not really scale. So, uh, but as a dedicated solution, uh, uh, there are only a few of those actually on the market, uh, like dedicated native solutions out there. Uh, and we started this uh, uh, this project actually out of a need. Uh, so we, uh, in the previous company where I was working as a CTO, we uh, built a, 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 a product uh, based on unstructured data, uh, comparing a, a lot of like textual files. Uh, and uh, we tried out all the libraries out there and they just didn't scale and uh, didn't work with uh, uh, filtering and geo filtering and so on. Uh, and so we started to build our own solution and after we uh, 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 were kind of ready to use it in internally, we thought, okay, hey, let's maybe uh, open source it and see uh, if somebody else needs it. And yeah, it was like a really classical story. And we just put it on, uh, on, on GitHub and uh, literally overnight we got the like, uh, hundreds of stars and uh, uh, engineers started to reach out and asking, hey, can we use it in production? And okay, there is a need. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's build, let's focus on this. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, so we, what we're focusing on is uh, essentially like uh, is a, a scalability uh, and performance. Uh, yeah, uh, this is like the most important uh, things on the engineering side, but at the same time, the developer experience, right? Um, there are solutions that are simple to use, uh, but they do not scale. There are uh, solutions that are uh, scalable, um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, yeah, to, to operate, to manage them, and deploy them, uh, it's uh, pretty uh, pretty complex. Uh, and uh, we try like to uh, to tackle all the uh, check boxes and uh, make it as convenient as possible for developers out there uh, to use uh, vector search technology. And that's really an important aspect because when you when you when you know I'm I, I'm an, an an old school developer too, and when when I think about a solution. Really, I want a solution that's easy to consume and something that that is easy to set up because, all you know, when you're creating this application, you have to figure out how to scale it and test it and prod. So you have to bring these things up. And and nowadays, there's different requirements because a lot of times you want cloud native solutions, and if you want a cloud native, then you have to you have to think about how these are going to scale in clusters and how you're going to bring it up and how you're going to orchestrate it. So I have I I'm I'm assuming that that's the type of stuff that that you're 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 thinking of when you're when you're creating this. Yes, exactly. So from very beginning, I think we, or we uh, have like a you know on the website what we're focusing on, and uh, this cloud native is one of the first points. Uh, yes, because uh, yeah, I would say ninety percent of our customers and users are are, are using cloud. Uh, some of the cloud out there, uh, and uh, that's why it should be like compatible. Uh, so, uh, so we build everything like uh, uh, in the manner that you can just start your Docker uh, in yeah in a few seconds, uh, a Docker container uh, by downloading the image, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, basically, this so uh, yeah, you have an uh, API on your uh, local environment, you can start uh, um, <clears throat> developing, exploring. Uh, and at some point, uh, you will think, uh, start thinking about it. Okay, uh, now I'm ready maybe to deploy it uh, into production. 
and then you have uh, um, yeah, different choices. And uh, uh, we're providing also like a handle chart so you can uh, basically also uh, deploy it in Kubernetes uh, environment somewhere uh, on a cloud uh, platform of your choice. Uh, but uh, uh, what we are offering as well, like is our uh, managed solution, which is like a board of cloud, uh, where you don't need to even to uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, to do much than just uh, uh, sign up in a minute and uh, yeah, to do a few clicks and then and you have your cluster. Uh, and uh, um, uh, all you need to do in your application code is basically exchanging the, uh, yeah, the uh, <clears throat> yeah, URL of your uh, local machine to, uh, to then point into and then to cloud. And what maybe is also interesting and uh, um, worth mentioning to uh, uh, we also like uh, there's like cloud is good and for uh, uh, probably um, a lot of startups it's, it's way to go. Uh, but what happened like uh, during uh, last year uh, is affecting like also uh, uh, the whole ecosystem right now. So you know this uh, hype around generative AI and LLMs and so on. So uh, all the uh, uh, bigger companies they wanted also jump on this train and to provide uh, uh, solutions as soon as possible to kind of to, uh, to be ahead of the uh, competition. Uh, and they started to develop it, uh, yeah, and using all possible tools around there. Uh, and uh, but later on, uh, we just realized, hey, wait a minute, we're sending some, our data somewhere in the cloud or to OpenAI, whatever. So and uh, it might be also sensitive data, uh, data of our, of our uh, internal data uh, or sensitive data for our customers. Uh, so uh, uh, wait a minute, we need to kind of to look at it closer and uh, well, how we're deploying it and to what the kind of data we're sharing. Uh, and uh, uh, this is what we also got lots of feedback. Uh, so having like a managed solution is, uh, uh, is great uh, to start with and uh, for, uh, yeah, for many use cases it works, uh, but not for all of them. Uh, and so what we added to our uh, offering recently uh, is a hybrid cloud solution uh, where we are offering like the managed uh, uh, control plane, uh, but the data can still reside on the uh, side of the customer. Uh, and this is why, how we kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, addressing this, uh, this need of uh, uh, yeah, uh, being able to, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, to have a sec uh, yeah, secure um, data deployment uh, and uh, not sharing like any uh, internal information uh, with, uh, yeah, with third parties. Uh, yeah, and this is how we uh, uh, basically uh, um, <clears throat> covered uh, everything from being able to develop a local machine, uh, being able to uh, use a, kind of a, a Dockerized environment, uh, or uh, yeah, uh, Kubernetes uh, in the cloud, uh, even managed cloud, and uh, now also if you play the managed solution uh, uh, in your own uh, environment, data, data, store, uh, data platform, data center, whatever you need. <laughs> so what have you seen that's um, maybe particularly interesting that people have used this for? Maybe even stuff that um, you, know, you haven't even thought of using this for. Have you seen some really interesting solutions that people have created? Yeah, so a lot of uh, interesting, interesting stuff is uh, going on uh, right now. The, the most popular use cases, starting with maybe, uh, yeah, with them, uh, are around like talking to the uh, to the data, to the internal knowledge base, and this is like the next level of, uh, yeah, uh, enterprise search. I would say they uh, don't want to search anymore, but they want to load all the data uh, they have, like all the documents uh, of their customers, the compliance documents, whatever. And then just uh, ask questions. Hey, what do I need to do if uh, X, Y, Z, and uh, and so on. And this is what we uh, are seeing on on yeah daily base. Uh, a lot of uh, companies are um, <clears throat> um, are reaching out, uh, also like uh, uh, large enterprises, uh, and asking, Hey, uh, we have this amount like terabytes of data. How can we efficiently store it somewhere and query then? Uh, uh, and uh, transform it into vectors and, and so on. Um, and then going uh, beyond this, uh, one of the most interesting uh, um, uh, use cases, uh, in our opinion, were around, for example, uh, anomaly detection, uh, like also to being able to uh, identify like uh, <coughs> uh, anomalies uh, in, uh, in, in data. Um, 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 uh, could be applied for uh, financial data, uh, but also like for manufacturing. Uh, capturing the anomalies and then finding the similarities and recognizing, okay, this is this kind of anomaly and maybe uh, how to kind of to fix it then. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, also a lot of interesting uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, use cases in e-commerce. Uh, uh, so uh, replacing the uh, uh, well-known search 
uh, with uh, uh, discovery functionalities where a uh, customer doesn't know about what is exactly he's looking for, not like the, I have this particular product, X, Y, that, and I just don't need the, uh, like the, the best price for this. Uh, but, uh, uh, hey, uh, I want something like a new piece of furniture for my, uh, for my flat, uh, and I have like an idea how it looks like. Uh, then I go like this discovery. I, uh, I just uh, choose a, a product, the more similar ones, and then I get like recommended like uh, uh, <clears throat> others. Uh, and then I just like, yeah, this is goes in this direction. And yeah, uh, this, this is not. And then at some point you might like come to this, uh, what you need, even without knowing uh, yeah, uh, 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 how it's called. <laughs> so going back a little bit, um, how does how does your solution integrate with with these uh, AI frameworks? Like, what what is needed to to integrate a vector database, or even maybe just your solution with with these frameworks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, you need an embedding model uh, to produce uh, vectors out of your data um, and uh, uh, like to transform data, uh, textual uh, images, and so on. Uh, uh, into vector embeddings. Uh, and this is uh, one of the most critical uh, points. And there are uh, several companies that are offering um, 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 uh, services uh, for this, so starting with OpenAI, it's the most popular one. Um, and uh, uh, they have like a basic API where you can just send data, uh, uh, textual data, and uh, get um, uh, vectors back. Um, or or uh, yeah, Cohere AI and some, some, some others. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, and this is like the uh, uh, most important, like essential part uh, here. Uh, and uh, then, um, uh, yeah, maybe even starting before, you need, of course, like an ETL uh, uh, pipeline to uh, collect your data from somewhere. If it's not already like uh, <clears throat> uh, just in one place in a single uh, uh, source of truth of uh, kind of database, but uh, you need just to collect it from uh, different sources. Uh, but if you uh, you already on this stage and you have your data, then you uh, vectorize your data. Uh, then uh, you uh, basically store it into a vector database. Uh, and uh, uh, then for queries, you again need like to vectorize your query before uh, sending it to the vector database. And then, uh, yeah, uh, get results back. And if you are talking about uh, um, applications like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, chatbots, uh, then uh, you need to bit more uh, of, uh, um, uh, you need a model, like a uh, uh, usual large language model you're using also to produce uh, the, uh, yeah, the output based on uh, results from a vector database. Uh, there are more pieces like, uh, 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 parts like chunking of the data, how you chunk the data, so, and, uh, um, uh, and then sending the pieces to, uh, to a vector uh, embedding uh, model. Uh, and uh, there are, um, you mentioned like a couple of uh, frameworks that they do the job for you. Basically, you then define, okay, I need, to, I want to use this model. Uh, it could be like uh, something like a model by OpenAI or an open source model. Uh, I want to use this uh, uh, <clears throat> chunking strategy and uh, uh, maybe a couple of other uh, options. Uh, and this is my uh, vector database. Please store the data dot, uh, uh, here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you have like a full stack solution for. Uh, uh, chatbot uh, application uh, or uh, yeah, the generative AI application. Uh, and uh, some of them are pretty popular. Uh, they become like uh, uh, mega popular during last year, uh, well, just to mention yeah, Langchain, uh, Llama Index, and some, uh, some others. Besides AI, how do you integrate with um, some of the other data solutions? Like how do you kind of transpose those data solutions into, into what you have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what we're uh, doing a lot, um, 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 uh, we're building a lot of integrations. So uh, with frameworks, uh, but also with data sources. Uh, like uh, we have connectors to Spark, the uh, Databricks, and uh, um, all, all different other popular sources of uh, uh, data, like uh, <clears throat> warehouses, uh, knowledge bases. Uh, and uh, um, there is like always this uh, step of uh, vectorization in between. Uh, and we uh, developed recently also our own library for this, uh, like open source work with open source uh, um, models. Uh, and uh, this is actually what, uh, uh, why we've started to build it, because we uh, uh, larger companies uh, come in and ask, hey, 
do you have this function or this function? And one of the uh, most requested one uh, was always like, hey, uh, do you have like a, yeah, a Spark connector or Kafka connector? And, uh, uh, and yeah, so we started to build this uh, uh, edit uh, to, um, uh, to our repository, uh, just as an example, so or uh, small libraries and uh, to show how, how we can actually ingest your data from uh, different data sources. Yeah, I mean that's that's really the key there is is grabbing all of those data sources and doing something with it. So yeah, I mean I guess the connector is just thinking out loud here would be probably one of the more important aspects of that. Exactly. Yeah. So the connectors. Uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, um, <clears throat> uh, several ones added just recently. We just uh, yeah even hired a uh, yeah. Uh, integration engineer just to build like uh, all kind of connectors and uh, also is the case uh, as the case I mean uh, was uh, yeah to uh, uh, because like uh, yes uh, we are coming like from um, uh, from um, uh, we are in the uh, ecosystem of data science and machine learning where Python is used a lot but uh, uh, now we're seeing like a lot of uh, interest uh, from uh, other communities uh, uh, so now we have uh, um, is the case in all possible language, all modern uh, languages, like starting from Rust. Our uh, um, our core engine is built in Rust. Uh, also Go, uh, Java, uh, and, uh, and so on. Like yeah, of course the JavaScript. And, uh, yeah. This is a community project. How you know? Obviously, you said that there there's a, a ton of engagement almost overnight. How much of this has been really, uh, you know, contributions from the outside, and and how do you manage that starting from a starting from a project you started and then kind of integrate yeah. the community? That's that's a that's a tough thing. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> actually, uh, <laughs> um, basically, uh, we are. Uh, <clears throat> um, we are actually defining the roadmap based on the uh, on the feedback of, uh, from the community. Uh, we're talking a lot with, uh, uh, to users, customers, uh, and uh, yeah, collecting feedback and trying then to uh, um, adjust our uh, roadmap uh, accordingly. Uh, sometimes there are guys are coming around for uh, from bigger uh, companies and they even contributing, uh, but we always like. Uh, 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 reviewing like the contribution and uh, uh, thinking, okay, does it make sense? Not only for this company, not only for this guy, but uh, for overall for the product. And there are a lot of cases where we just uh, uh, say, no, this doesn't like uh, uh, look like a good uh, like a good idea. So maybe we can improve it, or uh, we just uh, yeah completely uh, uh, yeah abandon this and uh, yeah and uh, suggest like uh, another a workaround uh, uh, or another solution. Uh, but uh, community plays a really important role. Uh, um, <clears throat> uh, in, uh, in overall uh, development, because yeah, um, if you're getting like a good feedback, you know, you're, you're not right way. Uh, 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 if not, and, uh, uh, users are just, uh, yeah, uh, uh, disappointed, uh, <clears throat> and discouraged and, uh, you need to improve something. And, uh, yeah, from, from, uh, conversation with community members, uh, uh, we, uh, are getting like uh, a lot of, uh, feedback that we didn't apply again to our, uh, roadmap in the end. Were there any features that are really stand out from the community that you said, oh, that's a great idea and, and, and kind of went that direction and, and um, brought some of those features in? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> um, we uh, recently like uh, uh, added uh, um, a lot of functionality about like really high scalability for uh, large use cases uh, where we uh, work with, uh, uh, let me say, web scale uh, platforms uh, and solutions and they uh, hey your production pro your product works well uh, like with uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, X uh, number of nodes but if you like uh, uh, to uh, to do like uh, go beyond this uh, then uh, you need like workarounds or uh, you need additional functionalities and so we sat together uh, uh, and we discussed like uh, uh, what we can do uh, and then based on this we uh, yeah produced uh, um, uh, 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 some uh, some some functionalities uh, like for, uh, especially for this use case like of uh, uh, yeah uh, for a really uh, yeah industrial um, uh, industrial scale um, uh, and then there are like uh, smaller uh, smaller uh, features uh, where uh, guys are coming up and saying hey uh, can we just improve like a few uh, um, uh, um, a few um, <clears throat> Uh, a few options uh, like to allow this and this and say yay uh, cool uh, you can even contribute yourself <laughs> if you want and now we have like over 100 contributors uh, um, um, on the on the project uh, even though our core team is pretty small uh, we just around like eight people uh, like really working on the core of the engine uh, 
uh, and uh, all the others, uh, they just contribute because they had an idea what how to improve uh, or uh, yeah, they, they fix something where, where they uh, face some, some, yeah, some issues. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that has to be pretty neat, though, just to see your your project that you created being consumed and and even iterated on by you know a large group of people. Yes, uh, exactly. This is like, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, um, satisfies me. Uh, like not from the uh, business uh, um, yeah point of view, but uh, yeah, as a creator. Hey, we created something uh, and it's used a lot, and people even like uh, are open to uh, to contribute uh, just to get to, to improve it and uh, this is like a great feeling yeah absolutely and uh, you know I, i've i've seen projects where either either they're they're loved or they're kind of lost and so it's it's really nice to to, to yeah. be able to be on the other side where where where, where it is being loved um, you know because there there are some that are just out there that are trying to get people to contribute and just you know there's yeah. there's not a lot of interest in it so yes uh, of course uh, yeah so that many uh, open source project uh, but we uh, our uniqueness maybe we just decided to focus on only this uh, and this is like our uh, yeah uh, our solution ecosystem and to do it as, as modular as possible and uh, doing one thing by doing it well uh, and yeah it works <laughs> so you know we have a, we have a few minutes left here. What what else do you want to get across to people about your about your solution and about some of the benefits of it? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I mentioned just uh, uh, that we just recently uh, uh, announced our hybrid uh, cloud solution, uh, and we just introduced uh, um, uh, also our startup program, uh, like for uh, uh, for smaller companies. Uh, and yeah, uh, we welcome everybody just uh, to try it out. Uh, our no cloud, we have a, 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 a free um, <clears throat> a free package of one gigabyte, which is pretty good actually. Uh, we know a lot of uh, uh, smaller startups are using it in production, which is also okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, uh, it is like a, a good opportunity to uh, uh, to try it out. Uh, and and uh, uh, yeah, uh, we hope that we with our uh, yeah. Um, um, deployment models, we are covering all the uh, use cases right now uh, and, uh, yeah, offering uh, all the people around to uh, just to try it out and uh, see how it works and give us feedback. And uh, feedback is what most valuable thing we can we can get. I think that's amazing. So what is this, uh, just going back to the startup piece, what is what is that piece about? What's the start? Obviously, it's for startups, but what is what do you, what's yeah. kind of the offering there? Yeah, so a bit uh, like the uh, uh, hyperscalers uh, are doing this, uh, we're giving them uh, yeah, um, resources for free. Uh, and also we do consulting. Um, we can review their architecture and uh, uh, yeah, to achieve the uh, uh, yeah, best possible results. Uh, um, uh, and uh, we also offer like uh, co-marketing opportunities, like if they uh, have the product ready for uh, yeah, to be uh, <clears throat> to be presented to the world, uh, uh, we are more than happy also to uh, to help them uh, uh, this and uh, uh, yeah, also uh, promote them on our channels. Uh, uh, yeah, this is what we do. For them. That's amazing. So, so where can people find out more about about the solution and maybe even contribute? Sure, uh, it's basically uh, uh, going to our uh, homepage, uh, which is under uh, quadrant dot tech. Uh, uh, and there are links to GitHub where you can welcome to contribute, uh, but you need some uh, uh, basic, at least Rust knowledge. Uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, and we are relaunching, by the, by the way, our website soon uh, with all the offerings I mentioned, like with sort of startup offerings and uh, partnership offerings. Uh, just uh, uh, visit us again in a few weeks and then you'll find even more information there. Well, thanks so much for coming on. This has been amazing because I'm always interested in kind of the the underpinnings of how all the, all of this stuff works. And I think that you know vector vector databases are are definitely an important aspect of of everything that's going on in the AI world and more. So thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, and yeah, it was a great conversation. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> all right.